This is Wilson Morales from Black Freeman TV talking to Pascal Armand regarding her lead role in All Blacks Terra Lake Drive, Single Black Female, which is the second season of the show. Welcome. How's it going? It's, I'm fine. Thank you so much for having me. So we're into the second season, which is totally different from the first. So talk to me about what the premise of the show and where your character comes in. Okay. Well, um, the show picks up two years after season one. Uh, Deja is a traveling nurse. She had an assignment in Austin, Texas, but now she's moved on and to, to a new assignment in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And so, you know, she sets herself up. She calls around, finds um, a place to live, an apartment, and it happens to be in an apartment complex that was on, that is on Terra Lake Drive. So she doesn't know anything. She goes on, you know, and uh, she meets up with her roommate. Roommate's kind of suspect. So, <laughs> you know, that's already happening. This is somebody that she's, you know, going to be living with. So that happens and, you know, she's setting herself up there. And then uh, she happens to move in at a time in Atlanta where there's um, this phenomenon or this event of all of these black women who just are disappearing and going missing. No one seems to be doing anything about it. So of course, like everybody's on edge. And then uh, Deja herself, like things are happening to her. She's um, seeing things, you know, her sleep is not uh, uh, peaceful. And um, <laughs> just trying to not give it Yeah, without giving it away, obviously. Right. And so, um, yeah, next thing you know, it just, you know, it, everything is set up for you to wonder, is she about to be the next victim mm -hmm. of what's going on with the, uh, the, the, the women being snatched and, you know, be, going missing and everything, so. There's a lot of product on TV these days. It's hard to find an audience. You know, you got to fight for that audience, whether it be All Black, BET, Showtime, so many networks and streaming channels. What led you or what attracted you to take on this project? Oh, well, um, I, I got a call from the director <laughs> and uh, he told me about the first uh, season that, you know, he had just, uh, you know, that he had done uh, during the pandemic, which was very impressive. The, the first part of the, you, like when we were all in lockdown and I was like, what, you got work done? Because I was at home for a year. <laughs> and so um, he told me about that and uh, he uh, told me how I could access the first season. I watched it. I was like, hmm. And then he sent me the script, the first three episodes. And I was like, hmm. And then he told me that he wanted me to play the role of Deja. And I was like, oh, sir, I had no idea. And so, um, you know, became more acquainted and familiar, got all of the episodes. And then I was just kind of like, yeah, I mean, so it, I've, I've never been a part of anything having to do with mystery, thriller, you know, um, th that type of drama, like kind of horror and suspenseful. And I was just like, you know, okay, let me just stretch myself. So it was, it was um, a bit of a challenge for me as well. So I, now this is also a lead role and, you know, you've worked before, but when you have a role like this, where you're front and center, you know, could it be daunting for you? Or are you ready for the challenge of being on more pages as opposed to coming in and reading sides? Um, right. Yeah. I've, I've, it, it was um, a lot for me, but I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a workhorse. Like I know how to adapt myself to different things and to different situations as an actor, as a chameleon. And um, I was able to, um, you know, get myself planted. The only part that I did feel um, was a, more of a challenge for me, which, you know, I love challenges though. Um, was the fact that we shot out of sequence, which is what TV and film is all about. You shoot out of sequence. And as a theater actor, I'm used to going straight through like chronologically. So that was, um, that was a challenge, you know, being able to pick up knowing what my preceding incident was and, you know, how that fits in, you know, emotionally and, and, and just in the, the, the sequence of things like where you're supposed to be in all different levels. So um, physically, emotionally, so I had to, yeah, that was a challenge for me. And I, I hope, I hope I, I, I met it, so. <laughs> when you're playing this character, you know, and granted, it's a fictional character, how do you do a deep dive as to 
the psyche of this character, you know, like, you know, do you look into, do you know anybody who's a nurse? You know, do you know anybody who's had, you know, roommates that they've never known? You know, have, do you know anybody who's moved to a place and had to readjust? All those things, I'm sure we all know somebody, but when you're doing a project, do you, you know, do a deep dive into your character? Yes, I, I definitely, I, I didn't have that much time either. So that was hard. And so it was everything that I had to do. It was uh, reading, it was talking to friends. Um, and then being a nurse and a traveling nurse are two very different things. So um, that was also like learning the difference between those uh, two professions. Um, I guess one is a subset of the other, but just learning what being a nurse is as opposed to being a traveling nurse. Um, it's a very... Um, solitary life you know because you move you're not just you, you you don't have time depending on how long your assignments are you don't just you know settle into one place work long hours at the hospital and you know settle and you just know that you're always going home you move and you you know go to the different assignments that um are given or that you look for so um that that was something and just uh uh learning just the 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 solitude of this life was also um, a challenge because I I'm I'm not I'm not gregarious but uh, you know I'm a little bit of a social butterfly pre COVID you know it was so um, learning that and then uh, just uh, um, I I've never lived in Atlanta before so just uh, knowing the area the culture of those people there like not to say I mean Atlanta and New York are both cosmopolitan places but you know there's you know there there are nuances. And so um, just learning that for the short time that I was there. And, um, and then, well, the other thing that I did love about Atlanta is just that like, it's, well, at least the, the area that I was staying in, it's like all black. So <laughs> I, I just, I, I love that. So uh, <laughs> it, was, um, it, was, it was a little bit of a shift for me, but I loved doing as much of a dive as I could given the time that I was, um, when I knew that I was being attached to the, um, to the project, um, like going in, trying to research, trying to um, be in place. And when I was there just to, you know, take it in as much as I could, um, talking to as many people as I could, um, because talking is what we can do these days. It's not like, you know, traveling, the health considerations that we have are many over what we were able to do before. So it was all of those things that I had to take in consideration and do the, mo the, the most um, research that I could um, in place, you know, without having to, you know, put my health at risk or anything else. So, um, but, but I mean, I, 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 for me, that's the best part of character building, like just learning it, putting as much as I can together before I get to set or to the stage and then um, having a chance for it to flourish. And then, you know, picking out what works, what doesn't, and then going, going from there. You're working opposite Yolanda Ross, who I talked to recently because she also has the shy going on, but okay. obviously you're playing roommates. What was that chemistry like? Well, you know, had you known her already? You know, did you guys get to know each other during this? I knew of her work and she's just fabulous and so um got, getting a chance to work she was part of the um discerning decisions that allowed me to be like what oh yolanda ross she's she's gonna be my my scene partner yes i'm doing this project so um no but getting to work with her was was a gift you know um to to um somebody who pushes and challenges me is is like the best type of scene partner to have. And she was there. She was also teaching me as well because I'm like moving over or just working in a different medium than what I'm used to. And so um, having her there to, you know, let me know how things were going and to just, um, you know, guide me was also, um, it was great to have her there. Now, when you do a show, and as you mentioned, obviously shooting out a sequence was something new to you. What did you learn as a pro in, the, in the process of doing this as an actress that increases your skill set? You know, uh, I've seen your work on, on theater, but now you're doing a show. You're now the lead. You know, what did you take from knowing this that will help you out on projects coming up down the road? Uh, well, hopefully projects that are coming down the road. Uh, but um, 
I had to uh, develop <laughs> my short-term memory <laughs> because things were changing. You know, um, uh, things were being omitted, deleted, uh, switched around. People that I, I thought I was doing a scene by myself and all of a sudden somebody else was in it. And I was just like, oh, okay. So it was just being able to be definitely more flexible and to be able to use the um, the character development that I and the research that I had um, put together for Deja, but then to also be able to have it to turn on a dime so that whatever new changes were coming my way, I wasn't, you know, stumped by them or just like, oh no, I can't. I just to be like, okay, fine, be able to do that. That's, that's quite a skill. Um, just to be th that flexible and then keeping the work that you have done for the background of your character intact. So, mm -hmm. And then, you know, this is a certain type of genre. Are you a fan of this genre? You said you were at home for a year. Did you watch other shows of this genre? Of uh, thr I, I have thrillers? To say no. I have to say no, but um, I, I, I do like the, 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 um, I do like the suspense and you just not knowing what is coming next and to just be able to react to, um, or, or you, the psychological thrillers too, are something that I really enjoy, but I don't ever really get to do. So yeah, I was definitely, it wasn't, it, I will say it wasn't something that I watched enough to, unless we think that the news <laughs> thr thriller enough and hor horror enough, watching that every day was enough for me, but no, I did not go into watching more thrillers and horror movies and stuff like that well, during during the uh, pandemic lockdown. So when you're not promoting a show, which is currently on, you know, uh, what makes you humble? What keeps you humble? You know, what do you do during, you know, that people do not know you from that? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I feel that a lot of people, you know, unless, you know, you're on the theater scene, you may not know too much of what I do, but I mean, you know, I've had a few guest star um, episodes on different shows, and which I'm very grateful for. Um, listen, it, it is so real. The fact that I wake up every morning and that I am able to breathe on my own, my body is my own, I can autonomously get to where I need to go, my legs work, my heart is still pumping. That's, that's keeping me humble enough. <laughs> it's, we, we've gone through a lot in the past two years, you know, like going on three. So it's um, being able to work because if you, um, our bodies are our commodities, if as, as actors, as artists, our bodies are our commodities. If you don't feel well and you have to be in front of an audience, at least on the theater side, but even when you're on a set, people are relying on you to get your lines right, to, you know, uh, deliver on the scene. And if you're not feeling well, that's going to have a bearing on what you, what what you give out, what what you deliver. And so, um, grateful every day for the fact that I can wake up, I can breathe, my heart is pumping, I can eat, uh, you know, and and just still being in the world. Before I let you go, any plans to come back to the theater world? Do, um, no, not particularly. I am I am writing though, so that's. That, that was what people um, I felt were doing during the lockdown, you know, just uh, writing because we weren't able to go to work. And so being able to, to write and um, put it into play form and turning things into screenplays is what I'm working on right now. So I'll be looking forward to see it. What you have coming up, hopefully down the road. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Keep it going. Single Thank Black, you. well, Terra Lake Drive, Single Black Female, currently on AMC. Take care. Thank you.